Hello everyone, my name is Matteo. I am the developer of the Comfy UI IP adapter extension. And today I have some great news for you. So Tencent Lab just released a new IP adapter model called Face ID. It promises better quality when dealing with faces. So I implemented the new models into my extension and I wanted to show you how to deal with it because it is a little different compared to the other models. First of all, Face ID uses Inside Face instead of a Clip Vision encoder. So you need to install it into your Comfy UI environment. And of course, you need to download the new models. Check the documentation on my repository because you'll find all the information you need to get these new models started. Before I begin, let me thank uh, Hu Ye, who is the developer of the original IP adapter implementation and Lux JDJF, who started the development of the IP adapter for ConfUI, and now we are working together on my repository. Without them, all this wouldn't be possible. They are the smart ones, I am just the cannon fodder. So this is a very basic workflow for a plus face model. The result varies a lot based on the reference image. Sometimes you get a very close likeliness, others not so much. In this case, we weren't uh, very lucky, but let's see if we can improve that. First of all, the plus face, but also the full face models really like the face to take the whole frame. So to improve the result, I'm cropping the image a little better with an image crop node. I'm cropping to the center. I'm taking a bigger frame and a little offset. Since I am at it, I am also adding a prep image for clip vision. This will ensure that the image is at the right dimension. It will use a better interpolation and I'm also adding a tiny bit of sharpening. Let's see if things improve a little. Okay, it's definitely sharper. The likeliness is more or less the same, but we will use this image as a reference to see if face ID is actually better. So I need another IP adapter apply node and another K sampler. For the IP adapter model, I select face ID. At the moment, it's available only for SD15. And instead of a clip vision model, I need the inside face loader. At the moment, the only option is the provider. If it works with CUDA, go for it, but it might not work even if you have an Nvidia card. So in that case, just pick CPU. Now, this is important. The face ID model works together with its own LoRa. So we need to load a LoRa with a LoRa loader model only node. We connect it to the checkpoint and then to the IP adapter. And of course, select the IP adapter face ID LoRa. For the strength, 0.6 is a good start. Positive and negative, the latent, so let's see how it goes. The first time that you run the workflow, the inside face model will be downloaded, so it will take some time. Also, every time that you run a workflow with face ID in it, the inside face model needs to be loaded and it takes a few seconds. So as you can see, we got an error. This is because the picture for inside face needs to be prepared differently compared to the other IP adapter models while plus face needs the face to take the whole frame inside face prefers the subject to be farther away and to have a little more context be sure to include the whole head and not just the face so in this case we are using the first image let's see if it works now it succeeded and the likeliness is definitely better the first one is almost an illustration. This one came out really nice, but this is not all because face ID can be actually improved with a second pass with another face model. So basically I'm taking another IP adapter node. I'm using another K sampler so we can see the difference. Then I'm connecting face ID to the new IP adapter node, then to the K sampler and the preview. I'm lowering the weight quite a bit, let's say 0.4, and the new image will be generated with both face ID and plus face. 
let me decrease the strength another little bit and now basically we get the strength of both models you will have to play a lot with the weight and also with the LoRa strength and every subject is different but yeah the new models are certainly very interesting of course we can also try with a full face model in my experience the plus face is generally better but you never know and in this case is actually pretty good let me add another generation with plus face so we can see the difference with all of them so the first is full face then plus face face ID and the last one is face ID plus full face now let's try another example Please note that sometimes I use a photo of celebrities just because they are familiar to us so it's easier to see if a face model is actually performing well but of course never ever use actual people pictures without the consent we don't need the crop so this picture will probably fail because it is cut too close to the face but let's see so yeah it failed so we would need a picture taken further away with more context but I've also added a prep image for inside face node it scales the image to the ideal size for inside face and also has this pad around option that adds a white frame around the image and sometimes that helps with the face recognition as you can see it added this white padding around I'm also trying with another checkpoint. Let's give realistic vision a go. Let's try again. The full face model didn't really perform great. So let me try to do the final generation with plus face instead of full face. The likeliness is slightly better, but not perfect. Let me try with a new seat yeah now it's a little better let me try to increase the weight of the face id model and also of the plus face okay let's try one more i don't think that we need padding for this image we are cropping to the top it wouldn't be needed to prepare this image for inside face because it's already good but i'm doing it anyway and this is pretty impressive as you can see the sum of face ID and plus face is definitely the better option also it is important to note that for example in this image there's no flowers in the background because in the text prompt I have close-up photo of a woman wearing a white spring dress in a garden but the plus face model took the background from the reference so to completely exclude this gray background color I would have to lower the weight of the IP adapter yes in fact now she is in a garden but we lost a little bit of likeliness instead in the final result we have a very close likeliness and also a good context okay I tidy up the workflow and added all the options for all IP adapter face models the first one is plus face then full face face ID alone and below I have face ID together with plus face and face ID with full face the model was just released so I don't really have best practices at this moment but I will make this workflow available so you can download it and experiment with all the options what I've noticed is that all face models require more step than usual so here I'm starting from 35 steps also the CFG should be pretty low I'd say that 6 is the maximum that you can afford my go-to sampler DPM++ to MSD GPU doesn't seem to perform as well as usual so in this workflow I'm using the DPM which is a faster Euler Ancestral as per the checkpoint realistic vision is a good one if you prefer a more cartoonish style Dream Shaper is always good and instead if you are after a more common people result lifelike diffusion is very good 
for close-up portraits like this one also I can't believe it's not photography is a good performer. As you can see in the previous models, the plus face and full face, the background is gray and we completely lost the garden from the text prompt, while face ID and the two hybrids were able to deliver a perfect image. The CFG is still a bit high and to help with that we can use the rescale CFG node. Let's see the difference. And now the image is a little more natural. You'll be happy to know that it also works very well with illustrations. Let me take Dream Shaper back. Inside face wasn't able to detect the face, so we can try to bypass prepare image for inside face, so the whole frame will be sent. And the result is pretty crazy. Since I don't like the this will change everything kind of video, let's do some reality check together. I'm taking a picture I'm sure the model will struggle with and I'm selecting lifelike diffusion that is hopefully trained with different ethnicities. And let's see together in a not controlled environment how this goes. So this last result is not bad, if you look from a distance they could be brothers, it's not perfect but still better than what we had before, so baby steps I guess. Let's do one more experiment so I can showcase to you a new node. So Comfy UI now features a stable 0, 1, 2, 3 conditioning node. This enables us to use a new node called stable 0, 1, 2, 3. This is loaded by an image only checkpoint loader and not a standard load checkpoint node. And as you can see it expects an image input. I'm taking my reference image and then I need a case sampler. The model comes from the loader, positive, negative, the CFG must be very low, like 3, and a good sampler. The image size is very small unfortunately, so at the moment we have pretty much the original image, but I can change elevation and azimuth and the model will try to rotate around my image. The result as you can see is not great and it works better with simple object over a flat background, but what I want to show you is that we can actually use the result of this node as base for our main generation. So I'm taking the best of the previous images, this one. I'm upscaling the rotated image with image upscale with model. Now we send it to the latent space, then to the case sampler with face ID and plus face together. And as the noise we try with 0.6. And now I can rotate further to get a different result. I can try on the other side, minus 30. If the generation is not good, we can try with another seat in the stable 0, 1, 2, 3 sampler. And now it's better. I think it's pretty cool. It's true that you could use control net for probably better results, but this is a very simple way to rotate around a subject. And sometimes you get very nice results. Of course you can enable auto queue and rotate in real time around your object. Okay, this is cool and all, but to the Comfy UI Essentials extension, I've added a new node called stable 0, 1, 2, 3 increments. That basically replaces the default one. Let me move all the pipes. The difference is that now we can specify an elevation increment and an azimuth increment. Let's say 2 and 4. Increase the batch size to 16. And now we get a full 16 frames animation of our rotating head. And this of course could be used as base for an anime diff animation. I've already done a video about animations, 
So I'll go real quick here now, but if you want to know more, check my other videos. So to guide the animation, I'm using a normal map control net. I'm pre-processing the frames first. Let's hope this is enough. Then we need an animate diff node. I'm removing the rescale CFG for now. Going to animate diff, then to the IP adapter. V3 was just released, so I'm using that. Next, the control net. Advanced control net apply. Control net loader advanced. We select a normal control net, positive and negative. The pre-processed image. We lower the strength, maybe even the time stepping at 70%. We need a very high denoise. Let's try 0.9. And this should be enough to get us started. I'm using a video combine node to see the result in MP4 format. It will be only 16 frames for now. Lowering the steps, trying with a different sampler and also another seed. Let me simplify the prompt also. Okay, this is not too bad. Let's see if we can fix the glitches with a second pass. So I need another K sampler. I need a new seed. And I'm driving the second pass with a motion control net. The reference will be the first pass. The model is a motion control net connected to the K sampler. The denoise needs to be lower. Let me try to increase the denoise a little and play with the control net values. And it's pretty good now, considering how little effort we have put on it. So now we can sharpen the result, maybe upscale, interpolate with Rife, increase the frame rate a little, and let's see. And now we have this pretty impressive animation. Also considering that stable 0, 1, 2, 3 is not really done for this kind of uh, animation. I want to try to lower the elevation. Pretty impressive. Honestly, it is far better than what I was expecting. And this technology is enabling us to do things that were impossible just a couple of months ago. It's almost scary. Okay, I hope you learned something today. Let me know what you think about the Face ID models. Join my Discord if you want and post your results there and looking forward to seeing your work. Have fun, be responsible with this technology, happy holidays and see you next time.